Did you know that you could use blend modes to brighten or darken the image, increase or decrease the contrast non-destructively? Well, if you didn't, that's what the video is all about. But if you did, don't be happy. Chances are you're doing it wrong. Either way, you gotta stay tuned. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and before we jump into those awesome stuff that we are going to do today, if you have not watched yet, I have made a dedicated video about blend modes in Photoshop, how to use them, how they work with real world examples and some advanced stuff. So go ahead and check it out right here if you have not yet. All right, so let's learn how to do this bright and darken contrast and some cool effects. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to make a copy of the background layer or the layer in which you want increase the or decrease the contrast or do the effects all right so to make a copy drag this layer and drop it over the second last icon one of the other ways of making a copy is pressing ctrl or command j all right so this makes a copy you know that very well that to increase the contrast some of you know this you change the blend mode to either soft light or overlay if you want to increase the contrast just a little bit select soft light all right if you want to increase the contrast just a little bit more, you select overlay. Okay, so these are the things. Just remember, anything in this area is about increasing contrast. But all you need to know about here is soft light and overlay. Soft light is little contrast. Overlay is a little more contrast. Obviously, if you think this is too much, if you even think soft light is too much, you can always use the opacity to control the amount of contrast from here. All right, so the next thing that you need to know how to brighten or darken the image. Select multiply to darken the image. See how it darkened the image, brought out the details in the clouds and screen to brighten the image. Now, how, how can this be useful? Well, the contrast is a pretty obvious thing that it, it will be useful. But how about the brighten and the darken thing? Now, here's the thing. If you want to bring out details in the clouds, go ahead and select multiply. Okay, create a negative mask of it. How to create a negative mask? Press and hold Alt or Option. Okay, press Alt or Option. Press it and then click on this mask button. This will create a mask with black all over, painted all over, okay, instead of white. Now, take a brush, make sure white is selected. To switch foreground and background colors, you remember the shortcut, right? It's X, okay? All right, now paint over the clouds, just that. You get back the details, isn't this amazing? All right, so that's pretty much about multiply. The same goes with screen. If you wanna bring out more details in the foreground, if you want to brighten up the shadows, you go ahead and create another copy and name it screen. Okay, just select screen, oh, I'm sorry, not name it, select screen and create a negative mask and paint over the areas where you want to bring out the details, maybe here, somewhere here, and maybe this is too much, you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity, okay? So that's pretty much explains how and why we should use this. But you know what? There's a problem with this method. What if I tell you right now, up until now, whatever we are doing is totally the wrong method. Would you curse me? Would you slap me? You cannot because this is a video. All right, so this is the wrong method. The fundamental concept is this itself, but this is the wrong method. Well, if you were using some very old versions of Photoshop, it doesn't really matter. But if your Photoshop has adjustment layers, it matters a lot. You know why this is wrong? Let me tell you why. All right, so let me move on to this image. Suppose I want to increase the contrast. I want to brighten or darken it. So I made a copy of this, all right, and changed it to say soft light, okay? And decrease the opacity just a bit. And so this is a bit contrasty. Now let's zoom in. Suppose I want this boat to be removed from this. Removed from this image. This is distracting. So I'll move back to my background layer, select the patch tool, select the boat, and replace it. As you can see, the boat is still there. A little bit of a halo of boat is still there. You know why? Because of this layer. 
because of this soft light layer, this layer which increases the contrast. And as I increase the opacity, the opacity of the boat will increase. Now here's the problem. The problem is, if you have to remove the boat at this point, you just have two ways. Either remove the boat from both of the images which can get quite messy and time consuming or remove the boat from this one, delete the image, again make a copy and again change it to soft light which is kind of tedious job. So that's why it's a wrong method. Instead, now listen to this, whatever I said, just remember the concepts, whatever I said, forget it, now whatever you have to do is that, let's just delete it. Create an adjustment layer. Sounds interesting? Create an adjustment layer. Doesn't And what's more interesting is, doesn't matter what adjustment layer you create. Create any adjustment layer, all right? So let's create an adjustment layer. Doesn't matter, I'll just close my eyes and select any, okay? You just tell me what I selected. Okay, so what was it? Photo filter. Doesn't really matter, okay? Let me just turn it off to see whether this is really affecting the image or not. Okay, so this is affecting it just a little bit, so I'll decrease the density to zero, to one. All right, now is this affecting? No, it's not. So whenever you select uh, an adjustment layer, you, sh you have to make sure that it's not affecting the image, all right? So even if it's on, it shouldn't affect the image. Now, Usually I go with levels curves, but j this was just a stunt. Okay, whatever, doesn't matter what adjustment layer you select. Now, if you change the blend mode of adjustment layer to overlay, all right, it will give the same effect. Soft light, it will give the same effect. And even if you remove something from this, let's select this and let's try to remove this one. Even if you remove this, from uh, this, uh, remove the cycle from the image, it will do a pretty good, awesome job of removing this. As you can see, you cannot see the halo of the cycle. You cannot see the transparent cycle. Why? Because you know how it functions. So let me t give it a break. Let me explain how it functions. The adjustment layer acts as a virtual copy of anything that's beneath it. Let me put it in this way. A real time virtual copy. Every time you make changes to this, changes are made in the virtual copy. And since you have not set the sliders, the adjustment layers are not affecting the image in any way by its sliders, it's affecting the image as a virtual copy when you change the blend mode. So that's how you do it. Isn't this amazing? So let me show you one more example how you might use adjustment layers and this is kind of tricky so stay tuned, okay? So in this image as you can see some of you want that desaturated contrasty look in sports images, right? In images which has which have a lot of muscles, maybe in street photography, some of you want that kind of especially in sports. All right, to do that, what do you do? You make a copy of this layer Okay, and turn this into black and white. How do you turn this into black and white? Go to image adjustments and desaturate and change the blend mode to maybe overlay. This gives a pretty nice effect, okay? A sporty effect. Decrease the opac opacity, of course, all right? But you know what? This is destructive again. This is this this has a problem, as I uh, said to you before. If you have to make changes in this, you have to also make changes in this one. And one of the most okay, I forgot to tell you, but one of the biggest drawbacks is that you are creating two layers. Now, if you save this one and you save a separate file just using the adjustment layers, I bet you that the size of this one will be the twice of the one that used the adjustment layer. So one of the biggest drawbacks is of course, once you, if you wanna make changes to this, that cannot be replicated into this, but what's more important is that it will take up sometimes double the space. So keep that in mind. So instead of doing this, what we can do, all right, we wanted a black and white layer above it, right? So what are the ways of doing it? create a black and white adjustment layer, heck. So select the adjustment layer and select black and white. Now, this is a black and white adjustment layer already created. Now change the blend mode to overlay. You'll have the same effect. Isn't this amazing? But as you can see, this effect is all cool and this is looking very nice on the cyclist, right? But it's blowing out the background. It's making the clouds mm, kind of eh. It's we are losing the details in the clouds. So what we can do, we can program this to be applied only in dark areas, not in bright areas. And how are we going to do this? 
Blender. If you have watched my videos, you know that very well. Right click on it and go to blending options and take the slider from the right, okay? and drag it to its left of the underlying layer because we are taking the samples from the layer which is beneath it, okay? So as you can see, the effect is moving away from the clouds. Watch, watch. But as the transition is harsh. So once it has moved away from the background from the brighter areas, press an alt, alt or option, click on this. This will separate the slider and make the transition a little bit more smoother. And there you go, you have the effect, but also at the same time, you have details in the cloud. Watch. Ooh, isn't this amazing, all right? Ah, if it's getting too dark, you can also decrease the effect from extra dark areas by going back into, uh, click on this, it will take you back to blending options, and you can drag it from the left too. All right, watch. Some a little bit to the left. All right, so that's pretty much, Okay, so this is before, this is after. It's amazing, isn't it? So I think I should keep the, keep the opacity at around 52. Before, after, before, after. Now using adjustment less creatively like this reminds me of one other thing. You know what? Some of you might argue that you, Imesh, you explained how to brighten and darken the image. You explained how to increase the contrast, but you didn't explain how to decrease the contrast. Here's what you can do. All right, what if you want to decrease contrast on this image? All right, let's delete this one. And what is the way to increase the contrast? Overlay. Unfortunately, there isn't a blend mode that decreases the contrast. So what you can do? Invert, right? So create a blend mode called invert. So this, this creates a negative. All right, and what is a negative? It's a total opposite of whatever you do. So change the blend mode to overlay again. So it totally decreases the contrast and this is way beyond normal decrease in contrast. So opacity, take the opacity to zero and then increase the opacity gradually to see what amount of decrease in contrast do you want, okay? So up to this, I think it's natural and after this, it goes like hell. Keep that in mind that anytime you have to use something like this, like an adjustment layer or a blend mode, do consider playing with the opacity slider. All right, so in this example, as you can see, anything beyond 30 looks kind of funky. And it is bound to look funky because it totally makes, decreases the contrast and takes it to a whole another level. So be cautious of it. So that pretty much wraps up the session. See, the goal of Photoshop these days is to make your workflow more and more non-destructive, Okay, more and more optimized so that you work faster, smarter and better. Hope you enjoyed it and if you did, make sure you hit the like button and also don't just subscribe, click on that bell button so that you don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Thank you so much for watching guys.